Question one: How quickly must food be cooled from one hundred and thirty-five degrees F to seventy degrees F? A. One hour. B. Two hours. C. Three hours. D. Four hours. Answer B. Pathogens grow fastest at temperatures between one hundred and twenty-five degrees F and seventy degrees F. So it is very important to cool food below this range as quickly as possible. Overall, food must be cooled from one hundred and thirty-five degrees F to forty-one degrees F or below in six hours or less. If the food does not get cooled. To below seventy degrees F in less than two hours, it must be reheated to one hundred and thirty-five degrees F and cooled again. Question two: What would be classified as an imminent health hazard? A. A sick employee. B. A shipment of spoiled food. C. A broken water main in the facility. D. A broken cooler or freezer. Answer C. An imminent health hazard is a situation that poses a significant threat or danger to health that requires immediate correction or closure. A broken water main can cause a number of serious health and safety issues for a food service operation, such as contamination of food or food breath areas and lack of safe water for hand washing and cooking. Question three: Which actions should be taken to prepare for a flood? A. Keep a supply of sandbags or other water barriers on hand. B. Close the facility until the event is over. C. Keep an emergency supply of boiled water on hand. D. Contact emergency services to find out what to do. Answer C. Keeping a supply of potable water in case of a flood is an easy way to help lessen the impacts on your operation. Having emergency supplies on hand can help keep an establishment running safely during a hazardous event. Question four: What would be the minimum internal cooking temperature of a chopped salmon burger? A. One hundred and forty-five degrees F. B. One hundred and fifty-five degrees F. C. One hundred and sixty degrees F. D. One hundred and sixty-five degrees F. Answer B. Why most intact seafood only needs to be cooked to a minimum internal temperature of 145 degrees F, and the chopped seafood must be cooked to 155 degrees F. Chopped or ground meats and seafood present a larger surface area for pathogens to contaminate, and must be cooked to a higher temperature than their whole counterparts to ensure all pathogens are eliminated. Question five: When catering, the service site should have a appropriate parking for catering and staff vehicles. B. A safe water source for cooking and hand washing. C. A HAACP plan for on-site catering. D. Extra staff to assist with catering duties. Answer B. Caterers are required to follow all the guidelines of a permanent food service operation. The catering site should have a safe, easily accessible water source and appropriate and properly located garbage containers. All food should be transported and stored in insulated or temperature-controlled containers to prevent time temperature abuse. 
Question 6. Cooler and freezer thermometers should be accurate to within A. Plus or minus 2 degrees F or 1 degrees C. B. Plus or minus 1 degrees F or 5 degrees C. C. Plus or minus 3 degrees F or 1.5 degrees C. D. Plus or minus 4 degrees F or 2 degrees C. Answer C. Having accurate thermometers is important for proper food storage and record keeping. Thermometer readings should be verified regularly to ensure they are in the acceptable range, and faulty thermometers should be recalibrated or replaced. The thermometer should also be easy to locate and read. Question 7. To keep pests away from food and supplies, how many inches off the floor must items be stored? A. 4 inches B. 6 inches C. 12 inches D. 15 inches Answer B. Keeping food and supplies at a safe distance from the floor helps limit areas for pests to assess or hide. Food and supplies should also be kept away from walls and properly rotated so pests cannot assess them as easily or nest and breed. Question 8. Which food item does not need to be behind a sneeze guard or in a case in a self-service area? A. Whole unpeeled bananas B. Sandwich halves on a tray C. Large bowls or ready-to-eat cereal D. Unwrapped loaves of bread Answer A. Sneeze guards and cases protect ready-to-eat food from contamination. Whole unpeeled fruits and shelled nuts are the only foods that do not need this type of protection. All food in self-service areas should be clearly labeled. Question 9. It is discovered that a steam table holding hot soup has broken down, and the soup may have been unheated for as long as three hours. What should be done with the soup? A. Reheat the soup to 135 degrees F and transfer it to a working steam table. B. Fix the steam table immediately and allow it to reheat the soup. C. Discard the soup. Hitch a new batch to 135 degrees F and place it in a working steam table. D. Combine the cold soup with new properly heated soup and place it in a working steam table. Answer C. Temperatures should be monitored regularly, at least once every four hours. However, if temperatures are checked every two hours, it allows time to correction action. Food found to be out of the proper temperature zone in this shorter time frame can be reheated and served. Question 10. Which mobile kitchen unit is exempt from the full set of rules applied to permanent food service operations? A. A food truck serving made-to-order tacos and burritos. B. A hand cart serving hot dogs with condiments and canned drinks. C. A concession van serving nachos, fries and burgers. D. An ice cream truck serving frozen package, novelties and candy. Answer D. 
Y Mobile Kitchens serving only pre-packaged items and drinks need only to follow basic sanitation guidelines. All other mobile kitchen units must follow all regulations and laws that apply to permanent kitchen operations. In many cases, these mobile kitchens will also require a special license or permit to operate. Question 11. A running faucet below the rim of a sink is an example of A. Back siphonage B. Back flow C. Vacuum D. Cross connection Answer D. A cross connection is any physical connection between safe water and dirty water. In this example, the water level in the sink could rise above the faucet and cause backflow of unsafe water into the clean water supply. Question 12. You have discovered size of a cockroach infestation in your dry storage area. What should your first step to be address the problem? A. Try treating the infestation yourself with pesticides or chaps. B. Design it specific staff members to deal with the infestation using pesticides or chaps. C. Call a licensed pest control operator to inspect the building and develop an approach. D. Close the facility until the problem is addressed. Answer C. Contacting a pest control operator should be the first step in addressing a pest control issues. They will develop an integrated approach to remedy the situation and are qualified to handle any necessary chemicals or traps. While it may seem simpler or cheaper to apply pesticides yourself, this can cause a range of problems and safety hazards and should only be done by trained professionals. Question 13. A customer calls to report that they contacted a foodborne illness after they ate at your establishment. What information should you get from the customer? A. General contact information and a description of what food and drink the customer consumed. B. A list of any foods the customer has eaten since being in the establishment, including food not prepared by your staff. C. The contact information for the hospital or doctor's office where they were treated. D. The names or descriptions of any staff members the customer came into contact with while at the establishment. Answer A. Foodborne illness outbreaks can be very detrimental to an establishment and customer complaints should be taken seriously and addressed immediately. Ask the customer for all relevant information regarding what they consume during their visit and contact information for any follow-up calls. Never admit responsibility, but express concern both for the customer and the situation. A football illness incident report should be completed and kept on file. Question 14. Performing procedural checks every shift to identify problems and comparing and analyzing temperature logs each week are examples of which principle in the HAACP system? A. Principle 5. Identifying corrective actions. B. Principle 6. Verifying that the system works. C. Principle 4. Establishing monitoring procedures. D. Principle 7. Establishing procedures for record keeping and documentation. Answer B. 
Performing regular checks of procedure can help determine if all critical limits were met, and what, if any, correction action needed to be taken. Analyzing and comparing records like hot or cold food temperatures, food storage times, and equipment performance can help identify any issues that need to be addressed or verify that the systems in place are working properly. Question 15. A PCO has completed a pesticide treatment on the facility. What documentation do you need from them regarding the chemicals used? A. A HAACP plan. B. An IPM. C. An SDS. D. A hazardous materials tag. Answer C. Pesticides are considered hazardous materials and need to be documented appropriately. A safety data sheet, SDS, includes important data about the chemical or chemicals, such as safe usage practices and any relevant cleanup or disposal information. Question 16. What is the sanitizer concentration range for chlorine sanitizers? A. 50 to 99 ppm B. 40 to 99 ppm C. 30 to 99 ppm D. 70 to 99 ppm Answer A. Different sanitizers require different concentrations and dilutions to sanitize properly. Chlorine sanitizers, such as bleach, require the same concentration in hot and cold water, and water with high or low pH, making them very versatile and effective. Question 17. What is the sanitizer concentration range for iodine sanitizers? A. 5 to 10 ppm B. 15 to 25.5 ppm C. 12 to 20 ppm D. 12.5 to 25 ppm Answer D. Why iron dye sanitizers are not nearly as popular or widely used as chlorine sanitizers, it is still important to be aware of proper usage and concentrations. Iron dye sanitizers work best in cold water and require a slightly longer contact time, 30 seconds, to properly sanitize an item. Question 18. Where should recycling containers be located? A. In the prep area. B. In the dry storage area. C. In the server station. D. Outside, next to the chest cans. Answer D. All garbage and recycling should be stored separately from food and food contact or storage areas. Keeping the containers outside in a designated area helps prevent cross-contamination and pest infestations from affecting food and storage areas. Question 19. What can hand sinks be used for? A. Hand washing only. B. Rinsing fresh produce. C. Thawing frozen products. D. Rinsing bar towers and sanitizer towers. Answer A. Given their importance, hand washing stations must be used for hand washing only to prevent cross contamination. Any activities other than hand washing can introduce pathogens into the area or block the sink from being used for its intended purpose. They must be well stocked and fully accessible to staff at all times. 
Question twenty: A manager notices that several nightly cleaning tasks are not being completed by the night crew. How should the issue be addressed? A. Rearrange the schedule to put different employees on the shift. B. Assess the number of cleaning duties assigned to the shift to be sure they can be completed in the required time frame. C. Write the employees up for not completing their assigned tasks. D. Have the night manager complete any tasks that don't get done. Answer B. Cleaning duties can be rushed or left undone if staff is not given adequate time to perform the duties in their allotted shift. Major cleaning projects should be assigned when they will not affect service or contaminate food, and shifts should be adjusted accordingly to allow the proper amount of time for necessary daily cleaning and sanitation. Question twenty one: The final sanitizing rinse of a high temperature dishwasher must be at least a one hundred and sixty five degrees F, b one hundred and seventy five degrees F, c one hundred and eighty degrees F, d one hundred and ninety degrees F. Answer C. High temperature dishwashers rely on proper water temperature to sanitize items. The temperature should be monitored regularly, and machines should have easy to locate and read temperature gauges or dials. A dishwasher that is not reaching the correct temperatures may need serviced by a technician or have a heat booster installed. Question twenty two: What is the best way to ensure that all cleaning tasks are being identified and performed regularly? A. Verbally instruct staff daily on the tasks that need to be completed. B. Create a side up sheet for cleaning tasks and leave it to the staff to designate. C. Create a master cleaning schedule and follow it. D. Hold a staff meeting to assign specific cleaning duties to each employee. Answer D. Creating a master cleaning schedule will ensure that all employees are aware of what cleaning tasks need to be done and when they need to be done. A staff meeting is suggested to train and instruct employees on how to complete each cleaning task properly. This time can also be used to assign certain cleaning tasks to each individual to aid in accountability. Master cleaning schedules should be in writing and available to all staff to avoid confusion and uncompleted tasks. Question twenty three: Identify the correct setup of a three compartment sink. A. Water at least one hundred and ten degrees F. Detergent and water. Sanitizer and water. B. Detergent and water at least one hundred and fifteen degrees F. Clean water. Sanitizer and water. C. Detergent and water at least one hundred and twenty degrees F. Sanitizer and water. Clean water. D. Detergent and water at least one hundred and ten degrees F. Clean water. Sanitizer and water. Answer D. The proper setup for a three-compartment sink ensures dishes and other items are washed, rinsed, and sanitized correctly. Any approved sanitizer can be used for the third sink and should be mixed to the correct specifications for the sanitizer.
The manual dishwashing area should be equipped with a clock with a second hand, so staff can accurately determine how long an item has been sanitizing. Question twenty four. When heat sanitizing items, they must be submerged in water that is at least one hundred and seventy one degrees F for at least a ten seconds, b twenty seconds, c thirty seconds, d sixty seconds. Answer C. Sanitizing can be accomplished using either heat or chemicals. For heat sanitizing, items must be submerged in water at or above one hundred and seventy-one degrees F for at least thirty seconds to ensure proper sanitization. High-temperature dishwashers may also be used for this purpose. Question twenty-five. Why is it advisable to only remove the amount of food you can prep in a short period of time from the cooler? A. To prevent time-tamped abuse. B. To prevent cross contamination. C. To prevent excess food waste. D. To reduce clutter and mess on food prep surfaces. Answer A. Removing more food than can be prepped in a short period extends the amount of time that the food may be subjected to time tam abuse. Once food has been prepped, cook it to the proper temperature or return it to the cooler as quickly as possible. Make sure all prep stations and tools are cleaned and sanitized before starting any prep. Thank you for watching.